Now, welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with the horse lightning takes. And let's get right to the news. Today, it's more like games with Naboo. Ooh. Because we are going to be talking Jedi Fallen Survivor. <laughs> or just Jedi Survivor. If it's not Fallen, it's not surviving. <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense. It doesn't have to. But a lot of information for the game has been coming out. So we're kind of going to recap, go over a lot of the information of the the new information that has come out for the game because we are super excited for it. It's expanding the lore. It's really cool. It's fun to play too. Mm -hmm. Well, at least the first one was. I can't speak for the second one just yet, but it looks very similar. So good chances. Part of it is an interview that came out in Games Radar Play Magazine where Asmussen spoke about like Cal's emotional journey where he's at at the time of Survivor. He said, a lot has happened in the past five years, you know. Cal's been on the run, he's matured as a Jedi Knight, but he's also experienced some things that have left their mark on him. He's feeling that weight of being one of the last Jedi and being hunted. And I think his physical appearance showcases that. Will we see that in the book, do you think? Well, another excerpt for the book did come out. Yep. And this one is kind of from Sierra's point of view. Yeah. And they're fighting Fifth Brother. More specifically, she is combating Fifth Brother. And she even mentions a little bit how he, you know, she kind of makes it sound like he's an easy adversary at this point. Ooh. Yeah. And how easy it would be for her just to use the dark side to choke him out, but she doesn't want to do that because, wow. the, but the temptation Talking is there. Talking smack to Fifth Brother. But I mean, we saw what Ahsoka did to the Inquisitors, right? They were. I always thought the Inquisitors were kind of, yeah. yeah. To like a trained Jedi, I don't think Inquisitors are much of a threat. No. But the interesting thing to note from there is that they were hunting Cal. Whatever brought the Fifth Brother there, it wasn't Sierra. It was Cal. He was hunting him. It's curious. And was surprised, apparently, by the fact that she was there, too. I do wonder how much this book will relate to the game. And we are going to review that book. We'll probably bust it out in a day or two, mm -hmm. both of us, and then review it. Because we do want to do more book reviews, more comic. We do want to talk more about that kind of... The broader canon. Yeah, we want to talk more about that kind of tertiary stuff, I guess you could call it. But yeah, so we will be giving you, if you don't want to read the book yourself and want to hear our fun take, we'll give you that. <laughs> Or you don't have time to read it yourself. Yeah, time but is But you a... want to know what happens before that Yes. Game. We'll give you kind of a summary and review at the same time. But uh -huh. anyway, I'm babbling. Yeah. Asmussen also said some light on Bode, the, one of the new characters that we saw in the trailers offering Cal a helping hand. Bode will be like a companion character during combat, unlike Fallen Order, where all the rest of the Mantis crew stayed on board the ship. <laughs> yeah, no, they're like, hey, Cal, you go take care of that. We're just that gonna, is We're just going to sit here. To be fair... The other one was kind of pretty much just exclusively the pilot, and Sierra was cut off from the Force and wasn't really a battler. And Marin's excuse? Marin's too cool for school. <laughs> I, I think it would be fun if Marin is playable, other than... Well, she might not be playable, but she could show up as a companion character for No, her. that's what I meant, not necessarily... I, I thought it would have been cool for some couch co-op between the two, but I know couch co-op is kind of dead these days. <laughs> it is dead, and it's dead in a sad way. Because now they want you to have two consoles so you can play together. Instead of, I'm sitting in the same room as my friend. Can I play with them? No. No, get another PlayStation 5 and a TV. Well, what uh, Asmussen says is these are the worst periods in the dark times. And Cal is constantly looking over his shoulder, being hunted by the worst of the worst. Bode is truly one of the good guys. The moment when he teams up with Cal in our trailer is just one example of the bond these two have. And how it translates to real gameplay. They look out for each other, which is critical for both of their survival. Cool. Yeah, maybe we will see Marin or Sierra jumping in and fighting along him at one point, too. They probably but... don't want to spoil the Marin thing, because I think a lot of people were like, we're going to see more of her, could we yeah. make her playable, could we do something with her? But the overall article does imply that Cal kind of split from the Mantis crew after some sort of a disagreement with Sierra on maybe the future of the Jedi. So we'll be curious to see if that happens in the book. I think so. I mean, and how why not give it actual... Mantis? I mean, you don't... Maybe Grease is dead. You don't want to make it where you have to read the book, but it'd be nice if the book actually has impact. Mm -hmm. And you can pretty much summarize the book in, you know, a little cut scene, essentially. Essentially. Where Sierra kind of explains something went wrong, and, well, that's what happened in the book. Yeah, and then we're like, oh, well, we saw what that was. We, yeah. we read about it. Yeah. It's always that fine line between making them relevant and making them required. When it comes to gameplay, we did get kind of a stance breakdown video from IGN, which was really cool. We Not saw... to be confused with actual lightsaber forms or anything like that. Don't no, be getting too this excited This is just here. their their form of stances. Yeah. You know, we have the traditional single blade, which they say is like the bread and butter of your combat. 
It's, they said like medium damage, medium range. It's like your standard basic thing. Then they go into the dual blade, which they say is still best for group combat. It's going to play still very similar to the original. Then they have the twin blades, I think they were calling it, where they say this one's going to be a little more advanced in the skill set. It's a faster attack, but they said it makes you into a kind of more of a glass cannon. <laughs> that you're, you're going to be quick, you're going to be able to fire off attacks, but getting hit's going to hurt you more. But they said that these attacks are more interruptible, that you can get away from doing finishing out the attack sequence. Yeah, the animation won't necessarily mm -hmm. finish. You can interrupt it. To interrupt a quick try and parry yeah. and stuff, which you'll need to do. So this is going to be a more technical stance, they called it. Then there's the cross guard saber stance. This is your high highest damage, highest risk. I thought it would be like high defense with the cross guard. But I hey, what so do I know? Too. But no, they said this is the highest risk because it's going to have slow attacks. Slow big attacks? Big, slow attacks. That's and they what say I it's like. going to be... You have to make sure you're positioning correctly. They're not computer's not going to compensate for you. Go, oh, you switch stance. We're automatically going to put you closer to enemies. You're going to have to make sure you're in the proper range to swing with it. And they talked very, very briefly about the blaster stance, where you're going to be using one blade, and using the blade more will power up kind of like your ability to use the gun. It's not like you're going to be, they said specifically, you're not going to be picking off stormtroopers from a range. It's like a combo move more type thing. Why wouldn't I do that? Because they don't want you to. Because it's an uncivilized weapon. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Another extract from that Play Magazine article, though, I was talking about earlier, was that fast travel and rideable creatures will Yay. be added to the game to make the exploration easier. Not to get back to your ship easier? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> that you still have to walk. <laughs> that was horrible. Well, I was trying to way. find a way back. I'm, like, looking at my map. My map is hard to read. I'm like, I think there's a line connecting from there to there. Maybe. That was that was so awesome because I remember when I played it through the first time. You kind of watched me, mm -hmm. but you didn't really pay too much attention. And I was like, oh, God, walking back sucks. And then you're <laughs> playing and I was watching you play and you're like, how do I get back? I'm like, oh, you got to walk back. You're like, the <laughs> whole way? Like, isn't there like a... No. Hey, I found lots no, of you shortcuts. Walk. Then lots you, and lots yeah, of Yeah, because all the stormtroopers had basically respawned and you're yeah, like, I'm just going to dodge all these guys. And... <laughs> you, were, you were a little frustrated, I think, because you're like, I had to cut through <laughs> like, all of these the guys the way back to the ship. And I'm like, no, if I go down this path I know you're going and all kinds through of... over here, I don't have to fight anybody. Yeah, I was like, I just took the direct path through no. the stormtroopers. You're I went around. zigzagging and taking <laughs> shortcuts that probably aren't even supposed to be shortcuts. <laughs> Again, you cheated every game you played. I didn't cheat. That's just how it was. Yes. Uh Osmosen also touched on the fact that Jedi Survivor is only available on current gen consoles. No PS4, no Xbox One. Gamers will be pleased to hear that the reason they're doing that is he's taking advantage of these power that the new consoles have. Yeah, I, he says I bottom hope so. bottom line, we learned quickly that we could take advantage of the faster processors, larger, faster memory, better loading times, etc. And the unlimited power. To create much larger maps with more detail, greater density broader enemy NPC variety, and overall fidelity. These features align perfectly with how we wanted to push the game. We didn't want to break what we did in the first game because it was so well received, but we wanted to involve and enhance the experience. This new generation allowed us to do exactly that. I believe it translates to a true new gen experience in the Star Wars universe. Very cool. I mean, Fallen Order looks good on the PS5. Mm -hmm. There's definitely a new diversity in enemy types. They've showcased off. We've got the B1 droids, which they say will just kind of be fun to listen to before <laughs> Roger, you kill Roger. them. They're the new one-hit kill. Yeah. Just well, like the stormtroopers yeah. were. You reflect a blaster back at them, and stormtroopers drop like... <laughs> What's sad? Then we've got the B2s. They say they're going to be harder to get rid of, more dangerous, because they're a little more burly. They're going to have melee more, yeah. attacks. They're going to have guns. They're going to have their missiles. So you've kind of got to learn the rhythm of the attacks. We'll have the BX droids. They're saying they're more of a mid-level enemy. Elusive. They can block attacks. They've got the viral swords. I mean, they were trained against to fight Jedi. Yeah. Droidica. No Every... idea of how you're going to be fighting Droidicas yet, because they are roll, including the bubble shield. Uh, you roll the thing underneath them. They said there's going to be the bubble shield, and they say if they're engaged in melee combat, they will also use their roll. You just you just So roll. they can try you and gain it. distance again. I learned it in the Clone Wars. Then we've got Magna Guards. They are going to be superior elite type of enemies. Supposed to be a major, major threat. Well, they are Grievous's personal guard. They've also created the shield troopers. The scout troopers were a little pain to kill sometimes. They could eh. be a little wily. Well, the shield troopers are going to be even more so because, of course, the shield. And if you're sitting there hacking away the shield, the other ones are going to surround you and start yeah. wailing on you. So they said one of the best things you'll be able to do 
force pull the shield out of their hands and then push it right back at them. <laughs> I was gonna say, then bash them over the head with it is what I Pretty would do. Pretty much. They've got the D- the Dark Trooper sentry droids are coming. The ones that we saw in first and I think Rebels. They said the first time you see one of these, it's going to be, pardon my French, an oh shite moment. Mm, good. That they are supposed to be terrible. And, and that even after having a limb severed, uh, they're not useless. What about Purge Troopers? Didn't mention them in the new stuff. Mm. They've got the KX Security Droid Enforcers are coming back as well from the first game. They're going to do more than just choke slam people. They're going to... <laughs> be looked at these ones are the ones that were training scout troopers they're going to have the electro stick and they're going to be a little more of a you know more than just a regular brawler what else is interesting is cal's going to be facing off with a jendai that near immortal species that first originated in legends that's what our big dude is tartakovsky clone wars yes they first appeared in that 2d clone wars adventure dirge yeah dirge yeah I guess where he uh, his species showed up somewhere else in the canon. They do, in fact, but uh, I have to read this in order because if you have me oh, jump all over the place, yeah, they might. I'm gonna we'll, lose we'll my find spot. out later. <laughs> Narratively, Ravis, that's his name, big dude, the guy I was calling Thanos. He's <laughs> going to be serving as a foil to Cal throughout the game. They said what makes the Jedi so interesting, in my opinion at least, is that in their own mind, in their own world, they're very chivalrous. They have a code they adhere to. It binds them to a certain code of honor for their conduct. It also binds them to their history and what's left of their people. So Ravis is not just gruff grunt number seven who can take an army down. He's got a long past. He's seen a lot of history. He could be thousands of years old. He's seen empires rise and fall. He's seen the Jedi rise and fall. He's seen the rise and fall of the actual empire itself. He's got a lot of tragic history and a lot of depth that we're going to try to explore. He saw the rise of the Jedi? That seems like he's very old. Very old. They say that the species is near immortal because they have those regenerative tentacles. Yeah, they have like little worm things. Mm -hmm. You said they say there's something really charming about the juxtaposition between how Cal, as a Jedi, takes his struggle with his history and the history of his people, or let's say his kind, versus how Ravis takes his history versus his kind. Cal has struggles and questions, and he tries to find his place, while Ravis comes in very confident with who he is with what he's doing, and that conflict is very sparky. It allows both of them to have a lot of reflection on who they are, where they're going, what they're doing. The Jedi are considered nearly unkillable because of those regenerative tentacles. They have a body that has no bones. They wear armor to resemble a humanoid shape. Dirge from the ter- was the most relatable, most notable ones to fans from the Clone Wars, who was only killed by Anakin, who forced pushed him into a star. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but in canon, there is... It's the Star Wars comics, right? Marvel comics? Yes. Mainline? Yeah. Yep. No, I remember. No. No? It's the main one, isn't it? Which comic was he in? Dr. Aphra. Was it Aphra? Yep. Yeah. Why do I have a remember? Dirge remember? actually cameoed in the pages of Dr. Aphra, where the only way the rogue archaeologist could stop him was to force oh, him out yeah. of an airlock. Okay. And push him into a sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this will be an interesting thing we've got going on with this character who knows how it's gonna go and last thing i want to talk about today is people are up in arms because it looks like you might be able to dismember some humanoid enemies in jedi i want to cut them in half not just cut off a leg like we saw in the in one of the footages a scout trooper's leg gets cut off it's severed no one knows if it's just the pre-release footage and it might be some sort of a technical no, mistake or if it's going to actually be in there. They would never release that knowing that people made a big deal out of dismemberment in the first game not being in there. They wouldn't the like, oh, that was time, a glitch that uh, we're going to fix. Oh, goodness. The dev's goal originally was to follow the guidelines for st- that Star Wars films seem to have set for loss of limb. They had said... <laughs> One so, in every movie? <laughs> so with Jedi Fallen Order, we've really followed the authentic Star Wars Lucasfilm realization of dismemberment, which is that it happens in big story moments occasionally, but you don't see it happening constantly to sentient people. Which is okay. more realistic. Uh, this, well, no, more realistic is that lightsaber cutting. I mean, we were just talking about the Ahsoka episode of The Mandalorian where she like cuts through a tree and like slices... She's like slicing people in half. Well, yeah, but we didn't see really. She sliced uh, the droid in half, it's but it's implied. But we didn't see him like fall yeah, into pieces. I, I get, I get why you don't want like cutting humanoids to pieces. I get it. Yet at the same time, come on, it, it's more realistic. 
much more. It's a video game where we've anyone who plays video games knows you've done probably far worse (laughs) to sentient beings. That would be that would be a fun question. Like, what's the worst thing you've ever done in a video game? Oh, there are so many things. Like even back in the original Fable games, I Fable is what I'd go to. What you could do to be evil was you could take your family with you, the family, your your wife and stuff to the dark cult and sacrifice them for power. And they yeah. would fall over and die. I remember that. I mean, come on. We've seen bad things happen in video games. And nowadays, video games seem to be bloodier than ever. They, at least there's no blood in this game. They cauterize all the wounds <laughs> when they cut people. Sure, sure. Not that I'm saying that Star Wars needs to be some gory type no, game. God, I'm just no, saying so. I'm not going to get up in arms if there's dismemberment. I'm just going to roll with it. It's going to be fine. No, it, it's fine either way. I'm, I'm just... If I can cut through droids into I'm pieces just saying, and all the critters in the land, I don't see a problem with you know, occasionally cutting off a leg on a scout trooper or whatnot. I'm just saying there's no way they accidentally showed like a, a limb being cut off in some of their footage and we're like, well, that was not intended. Mm-hmm. No, not after, not after the big deal that was made the first time around. But anyway, that's all we got for you this time, so now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell us what you think of any and all of today's Jedi Fallen Survivor news. <laughs> And let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.